Hello my friends, I'm Chris Biffle, also known as Coach B, and I'm delighted to be here tonight. It is October 14th, if you're watching this live, and you know, we usually say it's an incredible show, but my friends, it's a big night tonight because we've been working on the scoreboard for 15 years, and this is our largest improvement. So, let's get started with the show. I will adjust the screen as usual. And this is program 584, Masterclass 2.0, the latest update on all things whole brain teaching. And this week, we're going to turn your scoreboard into a living video game. Ah, it's going to be a good one tonight, folks. Here's our book. Anybody out there using Whole Brain Teaching for Challenging Kids? Let's see what our online audience has to say. Whole Brain Teaching for Challenging Kids. Who's using it? Denise is. M. Carlson. Holt in Texas every day. Madeline. Oh, heck yes. Nancy says yes. Ten Stars says Blizzard. Of course, can't live without it. Even bought two copies for the staff. Bless your souls, my friends. I've written a bunch, a bunch of books. Never got reviews like we're getting on the Whole Brain Teaching book. Go to Amazon.com. Here's my question. If you're using the book, have you written a review of it on Amazon.com? Coach B wants to know. Have you written a review on Amazon.com? I'd love to see a nice positive review. Raving review, says Holton, Texas. Marsh, help us out. T. Ruff, you need to do it, T. Ruff, because your kids are, are wailing with whole brain teaching. Thank you, Melinda. Now, let's talk about a new program, my friends. The new program is Super Improver. We have a Super Improver League, and the idea is that whole brain teaching classes or non-whole brain teaching classes are going to set and break records. And the first record is for transitions. How quickly can your class hand out and hand in a stack of papers, neatly ending up on the teacher's desk, no running. So go to our Facebook page, and it's um, Facebook backslash whole dash brain dash teaching dash October 8, and post your record there. Let's get this league going. Right now we're in the pilot stage. We've got someone by the name of T. Ruff in Oklahoma who set up a new competition. The competition for her was how long could her kids go without breaking raise your hand for permission to speak three times. in the event, put in the record, and see if you can get somebody else to compete. My friends, are you still seeing me out there? I think, I think I'm back online. Hits too much electricity in the room is right, my dear friends. Here we go. Let's keep it rolling. So we are one of the most popular education websites. If you want a copy of the professional development certificate, if you want slides for the program, details at their end, here are my two friends. Biffy Bluebird and Smarty Wonderbeak. 
But I want to get right into the scoreboard 2.0. So let's just go over the basics. We do not give rewards except the joy of academic achievement. No candy, no lottery tickets, no play money, no cheesy rubbish. You know, the pencils with the hair growing out of the erasers. We are not teachers. We are teachers. We're not carnival barkers. We do not turn our kids into beggars who obsess over junk. Throw away the treasure chest. Can I get an oh sweet mama or mighty oh yeah or something about throwing away the treasure chest? Anybody had experience with kids obsessing over getting junk? I mean, goodness gracious. It's shameful. What's my online audience think about that? Any experience with kids obsessing over junk? Everybody seems excited. Rosie Red Sox says she was pressured into treasure chest this year and she hates it. Intrinsic rewards. They don't really even like the junk anyway. Rosie Red Sox hates the junk her kids bring home. <laughs> Tall Man says she buried the treasure chest with no map. Andre Desch says he used play money. First year of teaching, it was a nightmare. Thank you for the scoreboard. Andre, I got a little news for Andre. I may be able to come down January 5th. We may be able to have a conference together. That would be really incredible. All right, back on task. So on the positive side, we put two grade levels higher than the current grade. On the negative side, two grade levels lower than the current grade. So when we mark a positive mark, it looks like this, nice and fast. Oh yeah! Not, oh yeah! Because oh yeah can be, oh yeah! No, it's, oh yeah! And a mark on the negative side is this. Ooh. Quick and sharp. Andre, put up one of the a link to one of your videos so people can see an example of how quickly and sharply this can be performed in middle school. So one more time. Positive side two grades higher, negative side two grades lower. If you don't want to, if you're a third grader and you don't want to make first grade kids feel bad, just put not best effort. But I like one grade level against the other. That way, my friends, they're focused on academic achievement. Next point. What about middle school, high school? They don't like frownies and smileys. Just put the grade levels up there. So for 10th grade, it's 8th grade versus seniors. Are you digging how simple it is to translate this into high school and middle school? It's just one grade level against another. Tenth graders would love to think of themselves as seniors and hate to think of themselves as eighth graders. Now, positive tallies. On task behavior or high energy or one student's remarkable deed of kindness or a whole class or group following a rule wonderfully, whatever you want, negative, the opposite of positive, but we never give a frowny for one kid's behavior. Never, ever. If we did, the kids would get too aggravated. So, in general, in general, positives address the whole class, occasional rewards for individuals, negatives usually address the whole class, or a group, but individuals never get negatives. These are all scoreboard basics. They've been around for a long time. Now, here's where the beauty is of having an online audience. How many marks are you awarding today? Are you awarding in general? How many smileys, how many frownies tell us your grade level? 
Let's see what the online audience says. I'll ask the question again. How many marks per day are you averaging? How many smileys, how many frownies, total marks? Crystal Long, one of our great new certified teachers, about 35 and fourth, fourth grade. Rosie Red Sox says she needs to get better. Nancy, about 30 today in second grade. Third grade, Bree says 20 to 30 today. Tall man, about 30. Kath have about 30 to 40. Crystal, good to see you. Um, about 10 for a 55 minute period. Blizzard, I think that's about right. I'm saying about 10 an hour. And a lot more in the afternoon, says Nancy. Okay, great. The other key point, now we haven't gotten to the hugely wonderful, amazing thing yet, but the other key point is never let positives and negatives be greater than three. If you reward too much, your kids will become lackadaisical. If you penalize too much, they become aggravated. In the most exciting games, including the scoreboard, the score is always close. So, keep it close. Up by three on the positive side. You'll find a little negativity going on over here. Up by three on the negative side, you can find a kid who's looking at you, sometimes doesn't look at you. Keep the score close. Keep them on the edge of their seat. And quick, boom, oh yeah, and oh yeah, and mighty girl, boom. Works wonderfully, but oh, it's gonna work so much better tomorrow. Here we go. I'm feeling so good, I'm not even gonna ask you to plead. Here's the big new idea. The big new idea for this scoreboard. When this hit me, it was so simple and so powerful, I couldn't wait to do a webcast on it. The big new idea is this, my friends. We've had the idea that the scoreboard should be like a video game. Let's just stop a second. Why are video games so addictive? Video games are addictive because they involve the whole brain. You're planning, prefrontal cortex. You're seeing movement, which is activating your motor cortex, and your visual cortex, seeing movement. Your emotions are involved. You're hearing sounds. But the key thing, there's so many different video games. There's first person shooters and there's puzzle games. But the key thing is that they've got levels. Why do almost all video games have levels? Let me explain. Here is a sea slug. Sea slugs have simple nervous systems. Pay attention to me. Sea slugs have simple nervous systems. You turn a sea slug over and you probe them, and the first time the gills close. And probe them again, the gills close again. Probe them again, the gills close, but not so fast. After about 10 probes, the sea slug could care less. The sea slug has become habituated to the repeated stimulus. That's what's happening in classrooms. You've got something, this is September, 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 woo, 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 October, woo, November, who cares? The kids have become habituated to repeated stimulus. There is unfortunately no level in the sea slugs world. Now if we could build in levels, I mean really build them in, craft them, so that each level was better and more exciting than the last, and if we had enough levels that it would last all year, we'd have what we have tonight. I want to hear from the online audience if they see in where this is going. Talk to me, onliners. You see where this is going?
Blizzard says she needs new levels. It's October. Holly Arby says, yeah. Levels for the whole year, says Bree. Oh, yeah. Jenny D says she's right here with me, and she's from Australia. Holt says we want levels. Leveled up scoreboard, says Rosie Red Sox. Liz from Elizabeth sees the light. Something to keep us going all year long. Carla Ann. Michelle is excited. Levels keep the interest and kids like not knowing what's ahead. And Melinda says she needs something new right now. All right, here we go. My friends, we are so in tune. God brought us together to do wonderful things for kids. Here it is, the big new idea. 10 wins moves you up a level. That's it. A win is more positive marks than negative at the end of the day or secondary period. 10 wins moves you up a level. Level one is called base camp. Every level is going to have a name. We're improving the former scoreboard levels. And the key idea is 10 wins moves you up a level. Michelle already loves it. Nancy is just going, ooh, Nancy, I told you, get your heart pills. Jenny D, that's okay, you can change it. Base camp is level one. We've got lots of levels, each one a little more exciting. Can I just ask you a simple question? Who'd like to see level two? Now you know level two's gotta be a little more exciting, a little different than level one. Who's ready for level two out there in the United States of America and including down under? Bree says she's ready. The teacher in South Dakota says she's ready and Nancy is so ready. Level two, I'm ready. I'm unendingly ready tonight. It is just so good. Now, check it out. We'll get there in a second. We have 15 levels and wild card options. Enough pre-designed levels for the whole school year. Check it out. We're still at level one. Level two is coming at you. Our goal as the scoreboard game unfolds is mastering brainies. WBT critical thinking gestures becomes the primary goal. Now you're going to see when we get up to about level six, the brainies come in as an important component of this game. Why? Because we love brainies. Brainies are our revolutionary critical thinking writing system. Here's our brainies that we've been polishing for six months. They're available under free ebooks at wholebrainteaching.com. And it's gestures to teach critical thinking, grammar, punctuation, essay writing. So we're marrying, look at me, we're marrying two of our most powerful components and adding a new one. Scoreboard, brainies, adding levels. All in a tight little irresistible package. All right. So here's the levels 1 to 15. Level 1, as I said, is called Base Camp. This is a sample third grade scoreboard. 10 wins, which will take more than 10 days, will move you up a level. Now, even at the Base Camp, you can have a wild card. You could change it to Captain and Crew. When the Captain scores, the kids say, ARG. When the crew scores, they say, yo-ho-ho. -ho. Just level one, wild cards. Or it's Thanksgiving. When the turkeys score, they say gobble. When the farmers score, they say yum-yum. Or elementary. Still at level one, same idea, just change the names. Super villain score, they say, hee hee hee. Superhero score, they say, aha. 
I got you for middle school and high school, Andre Desch. I'm coming up. Secondary. Still at level one base camp. So if this is a 10th grade scoreboard with 8th grade scores, the kids say sick. <laughs> when the seniors score, the 10th graders shout out the year of their graduation. So when the seniors score, they'd shout out class of 16. You see? Wild card options just on level one up the kazoo. Secondary, you could go chaos versus collaboration. Chaos, wah! Collaboration, oorah! Now dig this, I'm just at level one and I'm changing up the names and the game remains the same. You change up the names, you're going to get some mileage out of it. You could call each of these a different level if you want to. No whole brain teaching police. All right, back. Or you're a history person. When the Spartans score, you'd say gross. When the Athenians score, you'd say Athens unite. Or this is really good for middle school. Let's say your school's rivals are Fremont. So when you're scoring for Fremont, it's aye. When you're scoring for your school, it's ka-ching. All right. Now remember, level one base camp, you can change up the names however you want. Lots of mileage. Now I'm coming up to level two. Level two has got to be a little better than level one. Let's introduce Ruleville. Level two is Ruleville, and we start with the concept of bonuses. So following or not following any rules starts the bonus category at level two. Thus, with five rules, level two has substantial variety. Mark other behaviors as needed. So you introduce the bonus category, and we're going to really be looking for positive and negative behavior. the bonuses whenever you want. Is my online audience on board with level two? Level two. Level two. It's the bonus category. And you just introduce bonuses whenever you want. I'll go back here. I think when I'm switching my screen around, it's driving the internet crazy. So let me just stay here a little bit. Here's level two. Level two is called Ruleville. Level two is called Ruleville. And and you just add whatever bonuses you want. So that means I want you guys to be on task and asking questions, but we're focusing especially on rule one. We start the bonuses at level two. The whole idea of level two is that suddenly we have a bonus behavior that we're looking at. Everybody with me. Level two, you just add whatever bonuses you want. Okay, Crystal's got it. Everybody's on board. So let's look at some of the bonuses that are possible. At level three, let's go double bonus. Two bonuses at the same time. No, 
It's points for what we're looking for and points for anything else. Has everybody got that? It's points in addition. So you keep marking the scoreboard as you'd normally mark it, but you want a special focus at level two, you figure it out, and at level three, two bonus possibilities. Keep marking it in addition and so let's say you're teaching along and you see the kids raising their hand for permission to speak really really well give them a smiley. You see the kids who are being lackadaisical give them a frowny. You just tell them you know I'm really looking at rule two and I'm looking at help me today. Yes, just put a bonus section right near the scoreboard. Now the help me is very important. We want to teach it right away. We've always put it in the background and it goes like this. When I say help me, the kids help me. So if I say mm, two, four, six, help me, the kids will say eight. Or we'll say the definition of a trapezoid is a help me, many-sided polygon. So whenever you say help me, the kids immediately respond. This transforms the classroom so whenever you call on a kid and the kid doesn't know the answer, the kid just says help me. We want to get the help me in at level three. So you see we're using the scoreboard to introduce and reinforce rules, help me, and at level three, we'll do two at the same time. And take this at whatever speed works for your kids. So using a bonus gives the class a special focus. However, continue scoring for other positive and negative behaviors. Many bonuses are possible. Any of the five rules, help me, you're still cool, big gestures, full turn, looking at the one who's teaching. Does everybody understand the bonus category and how at level three we could introduce two bonuses at once? Maybe you just say, you know what, all we're working on today is the bonuses. Everybody on board with level three, the double bonus. Holt is. Now remember, this is a year-long system. Rosie Red Sox, we will, be, we will be posting the video in the archive. So that's the third level. Here's the fourth level. Another double bonus. If they're fast, positive. If they're slow on the help me, a negative. Level four is a huge upgrade. Check out level four, my friends. Level four is called No Traders. It's girls versus boys. You can add bonuses or not, but level four is a big jump up in motivation. Everybody excited about girls versus boys. There it is. Traders are players whose weak responses score for the other side. Of course, they're never named. Bonuses, of course, could be added. If your seventh grade class has no girls, do right side against the left side. Any questions so far from my dear online friends? Questions?
Now, this is a tricky point. Listen to me. Listen carefully. Girls versus boys is going to be an ongoing theme because it's the most powerful motivator we've got. It works with adults. What is a win then with girls versus boys? Listen. A win is when both sides have more positive than negative. I'll say that again. Sometimes the girls win, sometimes the boys win. But you get a class win when there's more positive than negative on both sides. That's a class win. That's the win that moves you up a level. One more time. Sometimes the girls win. Sometimes the boys win. At the end of the day, if boys and girls have more positive than negative marks, that's a class win. Ten of those moves you up a level. Has everybody got that point? And you can add bonuses if you want. Boys against girls, but a class win that moves you up a level, both of them have to have more positives. Everybody got it. The class win moves you forward. One room has got it. Crystal Long has got it. Our heart has got it. You can add small one-minute rewards if you want. Add on to this. Jenny D, then go right side against left side. Start of the alphabet. I'll show the boys versus girls. Here we are right there. Liz from Elizabeth digs it. If you have more boys than girls, play it anyway. The girls will be delighted to stomp a, few bo a lot of boys. Everything in the slides is available after the webcast. Question, how do bonuses move the classes up? A bonus is something where you can score points. And what moves a class up is a class win. So I've got bonuses and I'm looking at rule one and I'm seeing some good behavior, positive marks. Some not so good behavior in rule one, negative marks. What moves a class up is a class win. And bonus is just another way to get a, another category to focus on. Any more questions? Excellent questions. The questions are really helping people. Divide your class into right and left side, but I'm telling you, if you can do boys versus girls, you're going to get a ton of mileage out of this. Now, here is level five. Notice that each level is a little more exciting. Oh, level five is so exciting. The winner lines up first. A simple reward adds extra zing to this level. How excited are you by level 5 victory line? Winner lines up first. So you play boys versus girls and you never tell them coming up is a reward you get to line up first. Lining up first is great, says Nancy. It's an easy reward, highly motivating, never wears out. You tell them at level five what the reward is. You don't tell them at level four what level five is. Every day, Kinder Sue, you just play the game every day. Here's the deal. 
You play boys versus girls. I'm just going to stick with that. You can use other team. You play boys versus girls till first recess. Winner lines up first. Erase the scoreboard. Boys versus girls until lunch. Winner lines up first. Erase the scoreboard. So you keep starting over. But the end of the day is the most important. If we can end up at the end of the day with more smileys than frownies in that last crucial period when everybody's so tired, that's a class win. Ten of those class wins, we move up another level. I wonder what the next level will be. Kinder Sue loves it. No recess in your day, then figure out another nice reward. All right, now here's level six. Are you ready for level six? Level six is called blue dubs. Boys versus girls. Winner lines up first, but blue marks count double. Blue marks count double. Can you see how that'll add excitement? Everybody with me on level six? Do we see that blue marks counting double changes the whole complexion, adds another little tweak? Double coupon day. Kinders, if you play level one long enough, kinders will see the tallies. You're going you're gonna to have even more fun with kinders because you can stay at the level for a long time. They get a blue dub when you think they should get a blue dub. It's up to you to decide whether something was worthy of a smiley or cost a frowny blue dub. Or a squiggle dub if you've got a blackboard. When you call out a, a, a uh, I would just go, oh yeah, oh yeah, or two groans or two mighty oh yeahs. Here's the next one. Very important. Level seven, leaders rule. You take nominees for weekly leaders and you choose among them. The game remains the same, but the leader's behavior gets special attention. So you can now do some leadership training at level seven. Is everyone digging level seven leader's rule? The key idea is 10 wins moves up a level and these are some ideas for levels. Each level's got to be a little more exciting. Now this level is really cool because now you can start doing leadership training. Meet often with the leaders to give training and model WBT behavior. This is this begins ongoing leadership training. Now my friends, I'm going rapidly, but you can always re-look at the video and you can download the slides. But just hold on to this one idea. Set up levels, stay at each level as long as possible, 10 wins moves up a level. That's all you've got to get. One more time. Set up levels, Levels avoid habituation. Make each level a little more exciting. How do you make it more exciting? I've given you some suggestions. 
and 10 class wins moves up a level. Everybody on board with the simplicity of that idea, which is going to really motivate kids to keep doing better and better. Any questions? Let's stop for questions. Liz has got it. Our heart has got it. Meg Hunter says it's doable. Marsh 12 says she's in. Very workable and promises success, says Carla. Ten class wins. Independence is coming, Sweet Tech. Can Canadian Five is sold on it. All right, let's do a few more levels. Everybody's got it. Crystal Long, just order the order the slides. Addie is all is Michelle is all over this. Michelle has got it clear now. All right, a few more levels, my friends. Here's a level I like. It's called Time Out. Once per period, leaders can call time out and coach the team on how to score more positive points using lessons learned during leadership training sessions with the teacher. So you see, I'm keeping it the same. Boys versus girls. Let's just review. Review. Start out with a plain scoreboard. Change the names up. When you're ready for level two, use some bonuses. Then, do boys versus girls. You can add bonuses if you want. Then, boys versus girls, and the winner lines up first. Then, blue marks count double. Then, throw in some leaders. Then, throw in timeouts. Just keep building the game. So that the components remain the same, but it just gets tweaked a little bit every time. Holton, Texas loves timeout. Now, here are the last levels. Pay attention. We believe that brainies are the wave of the future. I'll show you the brainies again. The brainies are these 35 gestures, and you use five or 10 in kindergarten that teach critical thinking, grammar, punctuation. Kids use them as they speak to each other. You use them as you talk to the class. Who out there in my online audience is using brainies? Who out there in the online audience is using Brainies? I'd love to know. Go to wholebrainteaching.com. Let's go there right now. What the heck? I'm going to go to Whole Brain Teaching and show you. Hang with me as I race around on the internet. Here I am at wholebrainteaching.com. I have, I'm going to log in. I'm going to go up to free ebooks, general. And right here is the brainy game. Over 200 slides explaining how to use this revolutionary critical thinking writing system. Free download. All right. Let's get back to business. So what are we doing at levels 9 to 15? We're using the brainies. Brainy City. So 
under the bonus category, put in a couple of brainies and you want to see them using the brainies. The kids get to pick half of them and you pick half of them and every level up you add two more brainies. I'll say that again. Every level up add two more brainies, the kids pick half, you pick half, and the kids use them when they're teaching each other, the teacher uses them, so you figure out what you want to focus on. A class win is when there's more smileys than frownies at the end of the day on both sides. That, my friends, is pretty much it. There's lots more slides in the program, but I want to take any questions that you've got about the Level Up scoreboard. Again, here's the deal. Use that scoreboard 20, 30 marks a day, if not more. Build in levels. 10 class wins moves you up a level. We've got 15 or 20 levels, easily enough for all year. You can focus on leadership development. You can focus on the rules. You can focus on help me or you're still cool. Eventually we want you to focus on brainies. So this, the new scoreboard brings everything together. The bonuses give you a way to dial in each day what you want them to think about. The scoreboard is like the magnet now. You see the beauty of that. On average, uh, a 60 minute class, I would say anywhere from five to 15 15 or 20 total. Jenny D says, make cards with all the levels, but display them facing away so they're locked. Maybe put a padlock uh, symbol. That's great. Give me some more questions. Andre, let people know how many you use in middle school. More questions. 10 to 12 for a 45 minute seventh grade class. Yes, not necessarily. Sweet Tech, that's a great question. Should the boy and girl points be kept within three of each other? I think yes. So smileys and frownies for the girls are within three. Look at this. Smileys and frownies are within three of each other. I think the boys need a little bit more down here. Now the total girl points are smileys subtracted frownies. So the boys got whomped here. Keep the score close this way and this way. More questions, please. Now there's lots more in this slide package. I'll just go through it. There's, I have more wild cards here. There's wild cards and more wild cards. Crack Up City and Boogieville. Here's sample scoreboard patterns. How to mark smileys and how to mark frownies. This is a very rich program. We, we won't be able to do it all in 60 minutes. The ping pong. If you're not using ping pong, you do two on one side to another. Very good idea on the scoreboard. More wild cards. You can introduce the guff counter. You can introduce independence as a wild card more versions of wild cards, and Mystery Road. Let me explain. Mystery Road. Listen, 
You do it just the same, but you start a line down here and say, oh, we're going down Mystery Road. Oh, now we're going backwards. Oh, when we get here, some, we have a question. And we go down this way. Oh, no, no, we're going backwards. Oh, now we have another question here. We get down here. We're going forwards. We're going backwards. Oh, here's the big turn here. We need to do really, really well right here. Oh, so we have to go back. And here we get the big reward, which is, let's say, two minutes of dance time. Let's talk about ping-ponging. It's a fundamental technique. Fundamental technique. Start of a lesson, you say hands and eyes, and they're a little slow. You say mighty groan. Uh, not loud enough. Mighty groan. Uh, much better. Mighty oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mighty oh yeah. Oh yeah. Two frownies and two smileys, that ping-pongs them. It gets them on the edge of their seat. Nancy, are you using ping-pong? Andre, are you using ping-pong? People in red, are you using ping-pong? Liz from Elizabeth ping-pongs every day. I still got another technique I want to talk to you about. You know what, my friends? Here's the last one. There's pro versions of the scoreboard, etc., but we only got a few minutes to go. Try this. Try this. When your kids learn the difference between two grade levels higher and lower, use the following rehearsal to really jack them up. It takes only a few seconds. You say, give me a first grade mighty groan. Ugh. Give me a fifth grade mighty groan. Ugh. First grade mighty oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fifth grade mighty oh yeah. If you bounce them back and forth between the two grade levels, when you hit the higher grade level, you'll see instant engagement. Wrong way, right way. Has anybody used this? Pen can use it tomorrow. You're right, Andre. Ping pong revs up their limbic system. Now next week, well, my friends, if you want a copy of the slides, and there's a lot of them that we haven't even talked about, but here's a review of everything we've done so far in the